The BCIP Podcast, broadcasting from the state of North Carolina and out to the world, presents a conversation about the heavily anticipated sequel, Overwatch 2. IP60, my co-host here today in the studio with his Boohoo Man joggers. Hey, don't start today. <laughs> and Project Rock <laughs> tank top. Looking like he just came from a gym photo shoot in LA. Oh, you my already gosh, know, man. man. <laughs> hey, look, man. The fit is nice. It okay. is. It is. And I got these cap shoulders, buys and tries to pull it off. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm balanced from the top down. Anyway, Letting man. Them Letting them know. We're going to get into this Overwatch 2 news. Um, as fans of the channels know, we are avid Overwatch players. Yep. And the Overwatch 2 betas have all supposedly ended until the game's release of October the 4th. Now, let's talk about the content. Uh, I know fans wanted to see things like a new playable hero to seize mm -hmm. or a new game mode to play during the beta days. Uh, competitive beta was on the list too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, but in all fairness, man, Blizzard is most likely going to keep that hush hush and wait for the launch date. Uh, Brandon? Yeah, so they're going all in for the community, and we should be more than satisfied with the content that they've released. Uh, first on the list is the role you've been grinding in, which is the support and healer. On my way to a hard stuck goal, guys. Oh. I'm coming. <laughs> mm. TMI, man. TMI. Don't reveal those things on YouTube. So, getting into this here, in the first beta, healers were getting capped fast and to add insult to injury dps had a passive to allow faster movement now this meant that genji and tracer can naruto run through the back line for easy picks while genji spams the i need healing when he's only contested once by supports that are just trying to stay alive out of desperation sure words have never been spoken and let me throw this in here too man with one less tank on the field you lose that peel tactic for support so, what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you what you're going to do, <laughs> which is what most players don't do in low elos, which is improve your game sense. <clears throat> now, you don't want to be caught out in the open with no backup taking pop shots, all right? And now you have that support passive that regenerates health after 1.5 seconds of not taking damage. So, you can kind of play the corners and passive heal without using abilities but you need to play the buddy system with your other healer and try to keep them alive as much as possible you also need to know when to go on the attack and when to be evasive in team fights yeah yeah i agree uh one example would be like a anna and lucio combo lucio can boop an enemy away and give anna some room to breathe unless he's like a DPS stanky from the primetime days of Overwatch where he's murdering everybody in the back line. But, you know, the heroes with high healing output and low mobility can do it with a Brig, Lucio, even a Mora, and be really effective in and out of cover. Especially with the healing passive that they have. Mm, yeah. And I mean, Overwatch 2's playstyle demands that you be more aware of what's going on in the game. Uh, especially with, you know, one less player on the field. Everyone has to kind of step up their production. Even more so that now you can see everyone's stats. So now you can see who's really putting in work. Instead of typing in a chat, I have all goals. What the F are you doing? <laughs> yep. You know, there's more chances to carry in the role that you choose. But the only downside is that if your tank is garbage or is getting countered left and right, you're gonna take an L, big time. I mean, the tank role is for the brave at heart, and it can be a real detriment if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't know what's going on in the game and how to adjust accordingly uh, to have the best chances of winning. So to wrap up this segment, I think healers and supports, whatever you wanna call them, are in a great place right now. Uh, there will be more slots to fill as more heroes get added to the game after the game's launch. Anna, I think, is going to be played a lot, especially with her anti-nade, 
getting a lot of value with less shields in the game. It's very easy to land those nades. Plus, the combination of her and Junker Queen working together as well as the Junker Queen on the other side of the field. Very easy to stop her. Very easy to get more damage out of her if you're playing alongside Junker Queen. Uh, I'd even throw in a Brig and Mercy as heroes with top playtimes. But supports look good. They look really good from what I've played and what I've seen. There it is, man. Uh, so, what a time to be alive and experience the new hero, Junker Queen, the Aussie Mommy, has oh entered my. the chat. Oh I can't my. believe I just said that. <laughs> and is ready for the reckoning, man. Uh, now, let me tell you, she is a work of art that is fun to play, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna say it, man. It's gonna be kind of hard to climb with her, man. Oh, boy. Alright, man. Now, let me explain. I've seen all the pro montages of them popping off on the hero. So, I've seen top tier Aussie Mommy gameplay. Please stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Now, the devs wanted you, the player, to always be doing something on the battlefield. Whether that's slashing enemies for the final kill, throwing your dagger for bleed damage, you got life steal working for you while you're pumping damage with the shoddy and yelling like Tarzan to heal or speed boost your teammates or yourself. And her ult, man, is special. Especially when you go in with your team. You can use the ult to reposition yourself and get into the back line with your team and just go honey-baked ham on a man. Basically, unless you stop Junker Queen's ult with a spear, charge, or kill her with an anti-need, you're all dead. All right? A well-placed lamp will get it, too. Even a lamp. Yeah. 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 Now, with all that said, her biggest flaw is that she can't negate incoming damage for her team. Mm. She can only minimize the after effects. Mm. That's you see true. what I'm saying? That's true. Yeah. Ryan has a shield. Sigma has a shield. Plus, he's got Graviton Pool. I don't, I, I don't know what the actual name is, but you know either. what I mean. Yeah. Uh, Winston has his bubble shield. And Doom can even block damage, even though it's limited. But if Junker Queen is on the field against long-range heroes like 76, Sojourn, Widow, Ash, the list goes on. There's nothing to stop that unfrack cost of damage to your team. And you're already playing at a, at a disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's a situational pick where, you know, you need that burst damage and some quick heals at the last second for the team or those situations where you have like a meter left to push the bot or you have a tick left to cap the point something like that i, I believe is where jerk and queen can really shine now how about the rest of the tank lineup ryan winston sigma are gonna be top tier picks for reasons we alluded to they stop damage from coming in. Ryan can smash heads and get pins and go back to shielding his team. Winston can dive the back line and then go back to shielding his team. Sigma can stop long range angles and incoming damage while being with his team and shielding at various distances. Orissa with her rework has a lot to do and she's balanced both offensively and defensively but with limitations. Her limitations being, again, just like Junker Queen, long range damage. She can get environmental kills with charge. She can spear spin for a limited shielding ability, but once it's out, she becomes a massive target, even with Fortify, and her teammates can still take pop shots. Her spear is great at stopping ults and doing close range damage, but her primary focus is no longer to stop damage, but to dish it out and take in less. Now, IP60. Yes, sir. I'm starting to see a pattern. Lay it on me. I believe the heroes with the most play time in Overwatch 2 will be the heroes that stop damage. Mmm. That's a game changer right there, man. Now, let's take a look at this. Uh, we've broken down the shields. What about Wrecking Ball? Oh, 
You mean the ball players that get on my team, drop in the back line, get surrounded, and die instantly. Because that's all I get on my team. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other team has a top 500 ball Winston or Genji wrecking my SR. But I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. That's the calm before the storm, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. So, uh, what about ball, man? Uh, to start, he doesn't play with his team. And in a world where no other shield tank is present, it can be problematic for the team to stay alive. Uh, now, maybe he can isolate a target and get a quick pick, but over the course of many, many team fights during a match, if you're not doing that consistently each fight, how productive are you really being? Uh, and when it comes to tanks like Ball, Diva, Doom, uh, to some extent, it's important to know your counters, all right? And if you're in a mirror match, you have to outplay the other tank. That's just plain obvious. You know, consistency and endurance is a must in Overwatch 2 for the tank role. There it is, man. All right, DPS, the role where everyone is a esports pro in the Overwatch League. Hashtag blame DPS. <laughs> mm. Hey, well, in Overwatch 2, now people can pull up the stats and see if you're the weak link. So DPS, be on your toes. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so we got a movement speed buff. So mechanical skill is even more of a demand now. Uh, so much so that you need a 360 hertz monitor to track a flanking tracer coming from behind. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, since that first initial update, Blizzard has shut that down completely and given us the ability to keep ultimate charge while switching characters, which is a good give and take. Now, how does this play out with one less tank? You have more breathing room to get kills and you know you have more chances to pop off so we've all seen the clips of shroud and others spamming shields doing nothing and even with his aim he is still being placed in a low to average skill tier now keep in mind as a dps you need to win your matchups the better you do this the more solo kills you have which will equate to more wins isaiah mm, uh, mm. Wasn't ready for that one, man. Uh, you caught yeah. me drinking my sparkling ice water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I can tell. <laughs> but uh, nothing to add there, man. Uh, you know, let's talk about the new push game mode. Uh, that Are we uh, digging it or is it trash? All right, man. Uh, I'm going to tell it like it is. I was dubious towards this game mode. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be all that. So my expectations were already low. And when I played it, my concerns were confirmed. Now, on the plus side, the map designs are great. Uh, Toronto or whatever it's called, um, New Queen Street. That map design, beautiful, man. One of the best I've seen. But it's a very, uh, for lack of a better term, tiresome game mode now the time limit has increased to 10 minutes uh the team fights are drawn out unless you get a full team wipe or you're running away retreating as you're the enemy team and the other team is taking over the bot and you know if you take fights away from the bot you will lose distance covered or possession of the bot i mean so there's a variety of ways to lose um, and again, that just goes back to the game sense, game awareness, but you know, the game mode is a toss up and I think it's going to get a variety of patches after release, but you know, we'll wait and see. Right. So guys, this is strictly our initial thoughts. Uh, me personally, I didn't see much of a difference, uh, about the game mode. So I lost interest quite quickly, but you know, if you like push, then, you know, more power to you, I guess. Uh, so, moving on here, uh, let's talk about the 5v5 changes that were announced for Overwatch 2. Uh, Brandon, how did you feel about them uh, in, during the beta? Yeah, 5v5. So, I like the change. Uh, I like the change. It's dope. 
uh, 5 and 5 solves a lot of issues with how the game plays out and to be honest it still feels like Overwatch 1 you know uh, go ahead and give us the breakdown man oh you know I'm gonna break it down bro you are, you know I got go you, ahead and get it, man. Go ahead and so get it. 5v5 Overwatch 2 has introduced a new format in 5v5 gameplay now 5v5 gets rid of the double barrier bs yeah, and man. now the tanks have been hitting the gym so to speak so now they can take hits and survive and still do an adequate amount of damage yeah now the downside uh to the one tank is if the tank player is trash you're taking it out mm. because there's just way more accountability in the tank role another loss is that there's no longer a six stack q possibility but you know let's be honest most people do oq or four or five stack after a game is over yep um and again i have to keep driving this point home with one less player everyone has to step up their game yes sir. so it's uh another case of a very good give and take and i think players that were so down for the 6v6 and never wanted the 5v5 changes after playing overwatch 2 i am a converted believer and oh, the whole which is better debacle will be smoothed over i think with overwatch 2 incoming there it is man all right uh so uh let's talk about the microtransactions for overwatch 2 man uh we've seen the new skins that are gonna be coming out for each of these characters uh i know blizzard has been planning on the low low a whole lot of content for this new game this new free to play game ladies and gentlemen and they're introducing new mystic skins which are going to be replacing the legendary skins of old overwatch one and the hype is real man the hype is real so we've got a leak slash rumor uh that the prices for these mythic skins are going to be 44.99 now to add to the impact these skins are making these skins are customizable and they showed a cyberpunk-esque genji skin uh that you can change his outfit colors and whatnot but you know 44.99 is the price of that call of duty vanguard trash game but let me stop man <laughs> <laughs> this guy, man. You're turning into the Stephen A. Smith of video games. Oh, man. And that's all right, man. <laughs> and that's all right because he's got money, a career, and, you know, he doesn't have the hairline, but, you know, he's well established in life. So, just like your boy. I'm getting there, man. I've been there. I haven't been there. I got there. All right. Anyway, <laughs> back to Overwatch, man. <laughs> <laughs> Overwatch 2. So, looking at the track record of Overwatch, players were always allowed to unlock everything in the game, but that's no longer the case. Now, this can cause some worry in the fan base that Overwatch 2 becomes a game with Apex slash Valorant type monetizations, but, you know, what about sprays, highlight intros, Overwatch League, and special event skins the list goes on you know to the point where there's just too much potential risk for overkill with these microtransactions yeah yeah i hear you on that one um i mean me personally i have never put a dollar into a video game ever in my life and i never will um unless it's like the upfront cost of actually buying a game but as far as microtransactions go no that's not a that's not a thing for me um but you know if there's a way to have in-game currency without paying actual money and then you can still buy those same items that are being sold as microtransactions then i think that'll be the best option for you know the general population out there but i mean I, you're talking to a guy that just does not put in extra money for video game skins and gear and weapon unlocks and all that you, it's just not gonna happen for me I'm sorry so that's my take on it but 
and I think that option will work well for the general population. But you know, it's it's a wait and see type thing. Um, they got to make money off the game somehow, and you know, with Overwatch 2 going free to play, and the developers are putting out hopefully uh, good, satisfying content for the players and the community. You know, some diehard fans will feel obligated to uh, put in those X amount of dollars to support the devs and support the game. So, you know, it goes both ways. Um, if you're willing to spend money, you know, that's on you. Great. Um, if you're not, hopefully they have some type of alternate way to solve these issues. And if they don't, you know, I think Blizzard will still have opportunities for players to not spend money and still have fun with the game there it is man all right uh let's wrap this up here with one final segment overwatch 2 will it succeed or flop on its face brandon i think it will succeed but the road to success will be a gradual upswing mm. um the general consensus is that overwatch 2 is just overwatch 1 with new maps new heroes new skins one less tank and character reworks but that's just pvp if you add in the pve elements to the game that's when that wow factor comes in and i think blizzard is banking on the totality of changes to bring back fans of overwatch 1 and introduce new players to overwatch 2 because you gotta remember they're adding more content as time goes on so you can't just try the game on launch date and write it off like, oh, this is the same crap I just played. What is this? Garbage. <laughs> when another month from now, you're going to be getting new content, new game modes, new heroes, new maps. Let them so, know. I think it will succeed, but it will be a process for Blizzard to maintain and push. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, that was corny. <laughs> That was so corny. But, you know, that that's my two cents on it, bro. All right, man. So there it is, man. Uh, Overwatch 2. A lot of debate going on on the YouTube lands, the Twitch lands, the Reddit lands of the world. And hopefully we can shed some light with this video here about the Overwatch 2's final betas and find some common ground. This has been the BCIP Podcast. I am Isaiah Uchilo. He is Brandon Cherry. Yes, sir. Always remember to keep your mind set on your goals for the future and everyone you care about today, especially during these times. Yep. And as always, be consistent with your endeavors and you will pull through. We are out of here from the BCIP Podcast. Speaking Peace. that truth. <laughs>